Good day, class. I am Mrs. Omotosho Kikeloma, and I'm here to teach you the subject literature in English. Then poetry. Poetry. You have been, uh, you have been learning poetry before the school closed. So for, uh, we are, this is continuation of what we have taught you before. So the next point we have in our scheme of work should be racism. So we are taking racism written by E.E. So Yaolu. Let's look at the objectives of the poem yes. of this lesson. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to recite the poem. Then second one, give the content analysis of the poem. Then the third objective, you should be able to give at least three themes of the poem. Then the fourth one, you should be able to identify the figures of speech and the literary devices or poetic devices used in the poem. Then let's look at the background analysis of the poem. The poem is about racial discrimination in the society, whereby those races that claim to be superior than others maltreat them and look down upon them and their cultures. Then the poet advocates for all races to see themselves as one. There shouldn't be any discrimination between the black and the white. Then everyone must live in peace, love, and harmony. Let's look at the poem now. Racism by E. E. Sayaolu. The first line. Racism. Oh, racism. Line two. The canker worm that eats through the universe. The breeding divide and rule in the land where ebony and ivory could live imperfect. That's stanza one of the poem. Let's look at the stanza two of the poem now. Racism. Oh, racism. The caterpillar that burrowed through the human skin. Haven't you seen that people are the same? And ebony and ivory, like good and bad, live same. That's stanza two. Then stanza three of the point. Racism, racism. The canker that is devouring human, humanity. Learn to live in harmony, we should. Giving each other the surviving need. Living alive in the only universe with love, peace, and harmony. In the kingdom, ebony and ivory wood. So that's the poem. It is a three stanza poem. It is written in three stanzas. The next thing now is stanza by stanza explanation of the poem. The first stanza, the poet tries to explain to us what havoc the racism has caused in our society, dividing people, the black and the white, which is not supposed to be. Everybody must live in peace. So the number uh, stanza two of the poem now. The poet tries to explain to us in stanza two that we should look at a uh, caterpillar. You use caterpillar to to try to explain to us how bad this racism is that it burrows through human skin you know what caterpillar does it burrows the land it's not human skin but this is a metaphor used by the poet to represent how bad racism is to humanity so he now tries to tell us about the the bad and the good in the society that if you claim to be particular about racism. You are insane. You are not you are not living in harmony. So you should we should all try to live in peace, both black and white. He uses ebony and ivory to represent the black and the white. Then the third stanza of the poem, which is the last stanza of the poem. So the poet tried to explain and conclude that for human beings to live together, we must come as one. We shouldn't try to discriminate among ourselves. We should live in love, peace, and harmony. There shouldn't be any discrimination because God that creates us did not discriminate 
between the black and the white. Start. Now let's look at the teams in the point. The first team we have there, all races are equal. You can see that in the in lines 4, 5, 10, and 11 of the point racism. Then another team is racism is destructive, is destructive. That one is in lines 7 and 13 of the point. Then another team that we can find in the point is let there be peace, love, and unity among the races. That one appears in line 13 in the point. Then the structure, it is a poem of three stanzas, as you can see. Then the language, the poet has tried to use simple everyday language, except some few, some words like kankawo, buru, ebony, ivory, and sin that are in the poem. Then the mood of the poem, the mood of the poem is revealing and enlightening. Why the tone is the tone of passionate. The poet tone is passionate. Then the, the literary devices, the figures of speech used, you can see metaphor used in the poem. That's, if you can remember, metaphor is direct comparison of things that are not similar in nature. So the poet used metaphor where we have a racism being compared to Kankawa in stanza two. And it is equally being compared to Caterpillar in stanza three. Then it is also compared to Cancer in the same stanza three of the poem. Then there is use of repetition. The poet tries to use repetition to place emphasis on the on the racism. You can see that racism is repeated in all the lines of the poem. Then the use of ebony and ivory. The two words are also repeated in the poem. Then the symbolism. The symbolism in the poem, ebony symbolizes the black, while ivory symbolizes the white. Another figure of speech used by the poet is hyperbole. We have caterpillar that burrow through human skin, which is an exaggeration used by the poet to portray hyperbole in the poem. It is used to emphasize how dangerous racism is to human race. Then there is use of apostrophe in the poem. Apostrophe, the poet addresses racism as if it is an object or human being standing before her. That's apostrophe. So we have come to the end of today's lesson. And uh, there are a few questions you need to answer as assignment. So make sure you go through the, as you write the assignment, answer them, and give somebody to help you go through the assignment. Thank you. Well,